Tis I, Smudge, the honoured guest of this show. As this video is mostly about my gracious presence, I am sponsoring it by presenting you with the image of my fluffy paws and white whiskers. That is all. Thank you, Your Royal Fluffiness, for gracing us with your presence. And now let's get back to the challenge. I have previously engaged in many art challenges. 100 eye challenge, 100 head challenge, even a 500 hand challenge. Um, spoilers, that didn't really go very well. I finished halfway because it was a 10 day period. Very intense. A lot of stuff. But really, I thought it's very important to actually make one of these challenges or address the most important parts of our lives, our cats. Yes, that's right, so I'm dedicating this video to the catage, and um, it's not a normal kind of challenge, because I'm using 10 different methods and 10 different materials to paint or draw these cats, so I've previously known to get a bit bored of drawing the same thing after the same thing, even though they look different, it becomes quite repetitive. So in order not to get bored, I decided to engage in this mischievous scheme of using different materials, as they are slightly untraditional, I'd say. Most of these materials I'm going to be using are actually my own made dyes. Um, some of them are very organic and natural. Some of them, well, already made, like this ink. Like, I did not make this ink. Though I could have. I could have probably crushed some charcoal and um, or diluted some uh, acrylic paint. But it still wouldn't be exactly the same. So the first drawing that I have just made is ink. I would call it drawing slash painting as I'm using water in there as well to dilute and have some tone. Spoilers, the other one is about coffee. Mmm, the smell of fresh java. Uh, really, the whole room smelled like coffee. But to be a bit more honest, I have to say, I did use instant coffee for this. And I think that's why some of the drawing, when it when it dried, it produced this sort of shine, like a, a layer had dried up and it had a shininess to it, especially the thicker areas, which didn't get completely absorbed by this paper. Um, just so if you're interested, the paper itself that I'm using is a 100% cotton watercolour paper, so it is pretty high-end paper. I just wanted to the best absorption that I could possibly get and the best results, especially since some of these dyes are probably going to be changing colour. The third one is about beetroot. So I had this beetroot powder for my culinary needs of dyeing cupcakes or making some nice decorative slings on my baking and I just used it with hot wa hot water. I boiled some water, poured it over, mixed it and left it for maybe like an hour to cool down and then I sieved it through so I wouldn't get all the particles in it. And uh, yeah, perfect. If, if you know cooking with beetroots, well it just dyes your hands if you handle them because it's such a potent colour. But one of the things about these um, dyes is because they're natural, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if over time they started to change colour and started to get maybe a bit more browner or maybe, you know, a bit more darker or something because it oxidizes. So that's what happened with this one. So, oopsie, splashy splash splash. Uh, yeah, I, I made a little bit of a splash there. But wine, wine is it has acidity so when I 
placed it on, it had this sort of redder color. And then after a while, the color became the sort of purplish, um, very beautiful tone. I think this one is probably one of my favorite color shades that kind of happened. And uh, yeah, the next one that I really wanted to try is turmeric. I've used raw turmeric, I've used uh, powdered turmeric in cooking. Uh, I'm using powdered here, but it is also a very potent dye. Though yellow is the brightest color on the spectrum wheel, so I wouldn't be getting very dark results from this. That's why I'm layering. I would make one layer and then I would Put another layer and another layer on top so it would kind of build up and make this darker colorful details and of course how can i forget the british tea um yorkshire tea uh breakfast tea <laughs> i guess uh, if you know strong copper brew in the morning you know how um, dark the color can get. Well, I used three in just like maybe a hundred milliliters of hot water, so it became really quite dark. And yet again, a very beautiful color, a sort of burnt, like ochre, amber color. It's quite lovely. A very sort of organic looking um, color. I would probably guess this wouldn't change color over time very much. The next one that I'm using is uh, watercolors, and watercolors is what you can expect. Um, I didn't go for the realistic look, as just I felt like I'm going to do that with another one of the techniques. So I tried to use some brighter colors and just kind of do a quick render of these cats without fussing over too much about any detail. One of my favorite methods that I use to draw is this, it's gouache. And I just absolutely loved the way that it came out. I enjoyed the process, though it was the lengthiest process of them all, as I had to do layers and layers and mix colors and, you know, use a palette and stuff, as I wanted to really kind of go for um, probably the most realistic coloration of all of them as I have the ability to because I have so many different colors here and of course gouache is quite opaque so I can just uh, paint on top if I make a mistake and I really enjoy how this came out and I loved the painting process. So the next one is actually just pencils and charcoal pencils and um, I decided that I would try and do a little bit of blending with the paper blending stick as that would probably speed up a bit of the process. I do have to make a hundred of these cats and it took me around five days to draw all of them which in the grand scheme of things it's not that many but I do have other projects on my hands, so <laughs> it ended up quite a lengthy and uh, tedious procedure. So the last method that I am using, I'm just going to show you how I make a dye I'm using blackberries that I collected uh, in the summer. They were frozen, I just grinded them and then I sipped them through and got this liquid and it was actually more potent in colour than I had anticipated and you can see right now when it's drying Look at the cat I'm drawing, it was red, and then the first one is already getting purple. 
and throughout the process especially when it dries to the stage when I do the second layer and the details you can really tell how the color has changed look at that what a big change in color and it's really quite beautiful how it darkened and those little specks I really enjoy it I think I think it became a really quite beautiful method of painting So this is a hundred cat challenge and these are all the cats and the important part of this whole journey is I love cats and I win because I drew a hundred and one. Well, see you next week guys. Bye!